I am going to show you how to play songs on the piano. Are you ready? Let's begin. Page five. Those black and white things on the piano are called keys. Using a red object like a clothespin or crayon, find the two black keys standing together, then place your red object on the white key in between those two black keys. That key is named D. Find all the Ds on the keyboard and play each D by gently pushing down that D key. Also, trace around those Ds. Page 6. Now find the Cs and Es that are sitting outside those sets of two black keys. Also trace around the Cs and Es. Find all the C, D, E sets of keys. Maybe play all of them, too. Page 7. That box at the top of the page is called the stand-up box. Those numbers are right-hand finger numbers. Look at that little hand. Our right-hand thumb is finger 1. Our right-hand pointer is finger 2. And our right-hand tall middle finger is finger 3. We are going to pretend that finger one is blue, finger two is red, and finger three is green. In that stand-up box, little gray boxes are underneath the numbers. They are called beat boxes. They are each the same size. Near the bottom of the page are bigger beat boxes. If you tap very evenly along each box in the row, the space between each tap is called a beat in music. One, two, three, four. Those funny little shapes at the bottom of the page and above the numbers in the stand-up box are little cartoon music notes. Let's learn about them now. Page eight. Those top four shapes are called quarter notes. That black, squished round part is called the note head. Looks more like a foot. And the tall line is called a stem. Each quarter note gets one beat. They just walk, 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 taking a step on each beat box. The next set of notes have empty note heads. They are called half notes, and they get two beats. They walk, wait. Walk, wait. They step on a beat box, wait for another beat, then skip a beat box as they take the next step. The bottom set of notes needs to be finished. Trace over the gray lines, then turn three of them into quarter notes and two of them into half notes. Page nine. Take a clothespin or some other small object and tap evenly on each quarter note head along the top set of the beat boxes. Tap, 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 tap. Now tap on the note heads in the middle set of beat boxes. Tap, tap, wait, tap. Did you remember to skip a box for that wait? Now tap the notes in the bottom set of beat boxes. Tap, 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 wait. There are numbers in that bottom set of beat boxes. Oh, just counting the beat boxes. That blue beat box is box number one. The red beat box is box two. The green beat box is box three. And the bright pink beat box is box four. Four beat boxes in a row. Page 10. This is a drawing of a right hand. Place your hand on top of that drawing. Finger one, your thumb, is pretend blue. Finger two, your pointer, is pretend red. Finger three, your tall middle finger, is pretend green. Now tap evenly, first with finger three, then finger two, and then finger one on those numbers above the beat boxes. Those arrows show exactly when you should tap, right at the beginning of the beat box. The numbers look like they're sitting on little platforms. 
Notice that little dash is above that beatbox 4 to show that finger 1 needs to wait all the way through beatbox 4. Page 11. This is the very first part of our song, Hot Cross Buns. It is played on C, D, and E, like the drawing at the top of the page. Your pretend green finger 3 is going to play on E, your pretend red finger 2 is going to play on D, and your pretend blue finger 1 is going to play on C. Put your pretend red finger 2 on any D, that easy to find key. Then your pretend green finger 3 will be in place on E, and your pretend blue finger 1 will be in place on C. At the top of the page is also a cartoon drawing of flat fingers. Put your hand on a table and make your hand flat. Now pretend a balloon is lifting your hand up a little bit, but keep your fingertips on the table. Now your fingers will be curved, just like those cartoon fingers underneath that set of flat fingers. This is called piano position for your hand. Now put your hand in piano position on any three side-by-side -side white keys on the piano. Now push down the key under your blue finger one, your thumb, but keep all the other fingers in piano position, just like that next drawing of the blue finger one pushing down on a pretend key. Practice doing that until you can push down with your finger one easily. We call this playing the key. Now put your hand into piano position again and play with finger two. Remember, playing means pushing the key down. Finger two usually works quite well. When you are comfortable playing finger two, then back to piano position and play finger three on a key with all the other fingers still in piano position. Look at those cartoon fingers and try to hold your fingers in the same way when you play with your fingers one, two, and three. And now that dotted stand-up box at the bottom of the page. It needs to be cut out. The instructions are on the back side of the stand-up box. Those little cartoon notes above the finger numbers help you remember that you walk, 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 wait in this part. Page 12. At the top of the page are two quarter notes. One is right side up and the other is upside down. Notes can be either way. There are also two half notes, one right side up and the other upside down. Trace around those gray note outlines in the middle of the page, then turn two of them into half notes and three of them into quarter notes. Page 13. At the top of the page is the stand-up box for part two of our song. This looks just like part one and the stand-up box for part four also looks like part one. The beat boxes under the colored finger numbers are just numbered one, two, three, four, which tells us each box is one beat long. So we have to remember to hold on finger one for beats three and four. You probably don't even have to cut out part two since you already know how to play this part. Just practice playing this part two times in a row. Now look at part three. Those little cartoon notes above the finger numbers look really strange. Let's jump to page 15 to find out what these are. Page 15. At the top of the page above a gold line, we see a quarter note, our one beat note, with a flag behind it. And then we see a quarter note with the flag attached to it. When we attach a flag like that to a quarter note, it turns into an eighth note, which goes twice as fast as a quarter note. Eighth notes run, 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 run. Since those flags get in the way when there are several eighth notes in a row, the flags stretch out and become a banner. That banner ends when it touches the stem of the last eighth note in that row. So eighth notes look two different ways. Now look at those beat boxes under that gold line. There are four boxes, and the first quarter note is for beat box one, the second quarter note is for beat box two, the third quarter note is for beat box three, and the fourth quarter note is for beat box four. 
Those quarter notes just walk along those beat boxes. One, two, three, four. Now look at the beat boxes and eighth notes circled in blue. That little clothespin reminds us that when we tap an object like a clothespin or our finger, we lift up in the middle in order to make another tap. If we say tap and, that would be a way to know when to play that second eighth note in the middle of that beat box. Just saying run, 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 run makes it a bit difficult to play those eighth notes exactly at the right time. Now look down to those eighth notes in the light brown box. You can see that the eighth notes with the banner are easier to see clearly. We also see that run, run words under the boxes. But inside the boxes, the boxes are numbered. And instead of just numbering them one, two, three, four, they are numbered one and two and three and four and. Let's try to count that way and tap as we say each number and also tap on the and word. Are you ready? Go. One and two and three and four and. We can do this, but it can be a bit hard when there are both eight notes and quarter notes or half notes in a little set of four beat boxes. But there's a trick we can do. Turn to page 16. Page 16. Here we see little red shoes under the beat boxes. They are showing you that you can put your heel down for beat one, then lift your heel for the and of beat one, then put your heel down again for beat two, then lift your heel for the and of beat two. Try this now with just those two beats. You probably never thought your feet would help you learn to play the piano. Tap with an object or play any key on the piano. As you say one and two and as you tap your heel down, up, down, up. This heel tapping trick really works well when you have different kinds of notes in your four beat box set. Let's look at the middle set of beat boxes that have four beats. That first half note gets all of the beats one and two. The next two eighth notes get the beat three plus the end of three. And the last quarter note gets all of beat four. As you practice tapping through this set of notes, do the heel down, heel up for every beat box, even when you are holding down the half note. Get into the habit of using this heel down, heel up trick so you play your notes right when they're supposed to be played. Just like muscle memory, after quite a long time, your body will have an automatic feel for these half beats. I'll tap this last set of notes with the bottom beat boxes for you, and I'll be tapping my heel as I do it. One and two and three and four and. Practice these fun beat exercises until you can do the heel trick at the same time you count and tap. And use the heel trick as you learn your new songs, too. If you can play parts one and two in a row of hot cross buns now, add that tricky part three. The stand-up box is on page 13. Cut it out. Practice playing and counting with your heel trick until you can play it easily. Start out slowly. Remember beats that are in a row, like these four beat boxes, just have to be the same size. Slow, medium, what speed you choose, just have to all be the same size. As soon as you can play parts one, two, and three in a row, add that last part four that is the same as parts one and two. Page 17. Here we see gray drawings at the top of the page. Four eighth notes in a row joined with their banner and one eighth note alone with its flag. Finish those notes so they look like real notes. In the middle of the page are two quarter notes. Turn one of them into an eighth note. The bottom row of notes looks like those last four should be eighth notes, not quarter notes. Turn them into eighth notes with a banner. So you will have a quarter note followed by four eighth notes there. Page 18. Here's our hot cross bun song written with what is called music notation at the top of the page. The words to our song are in the middle of the page 
and two rows of what has been in our stand-up boxes is at the bottom of the page. Look again at the music notation. The note heads in that music go down when the sound of our song goes down. The arrow stays straight under the note heads when the sound of the song stays in the same place. So the note heads show the shape of the sound of our song. Wow! Look at those beat boxes near the bottom of the page. There are orange lines in between each set of four beat boxes. Music is written in little parts. They are called measures. Each of these measures has four beats. You should be playing hot cross buns with no help by now. So start singing the words as you play the song. Those three parts that are the same also have the same words, hot cross buns. And those eighth notes are fun to play while saying one a penny, two a penny. Page 19. Here are three drawings of piano keyboards. The top drawing shows a group of two black keys circled in red. Find another set of two black keys together. You know, the set with the D key in the middle? And circle it. This is called the two black key group. The next drawing has the three black key group circled. Find the other three black key group and circle it. Yes, this is called the three black key group. The next drawing has one two black key group plus the three black key group next to it circled. This is called the five black key group. Circle the other five black key group. Page 20 and page 21. Page 20 has a drawing of a keyboard that is missing groups of keys. Page 21 has little groups of keys to cut out. Cut out those key groups, place them in the proper places on that keyboard drawing, then glue them onto the keyboard. There are more little key groups than you need, so be careful where you put them before gluing them down. You're going to have three key groups left over. Page 23. Here is a page with drawings of a right hand on each set of keys. The top set has a hand big enough to reach C with finger 1, D with finger 2, E with finger 3, F with finger 4, and G with finger 5, all at the same time. Your hand may not be that big. My hands are small, so it was a very long time before I could reach all those keys at the same time. That is not a problem. You just have to learn to move your hand a little bit when you need to. Look at the middle row with the numbers 1 and 2 on the fingers. You can reach C and D with fingers 1 and 2, but if you want to go from C and D to E, you may have to move your hand a little bit to the right, like that hand with number 3 on finger 3. Now look at the bottom keys. The hand with the F had to move a little bit more to the right, and then move a little bit more to the right to play the G. Practice playing C, D, E, F, G in a row with your fingers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Your blue, red, green, brown, pink fingers. Take your time. Your fantastic hands will develop what is called muscle memory. After doing this lots of times, your hands will move automatically. You won't even have to think about it. You can even train them to come down from the G to the C just by playing G, F, E, D, and C with fingers 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Your pink, brown, green, red, blue fingers. Lots of times as well. Page 24. Another tracing game. Busy Buzzy Bumblebee is showing you how to trace this shape which is called a treble clef. When you see this shape in music, it means you use your right hand most of the time, and the sounds go from the middle of the piano to the top super high sounding keys way to the right. Page 25. Here is our walking song. Cut out part one and part two if you wish. This is a song using your five fingers in a row just like you already practiced. Watch that last G played with your right hand pink finger five. 
it is a half note there. Beats three and four. Page 26. A game. When a line in music notation goes right through the middle of a note head, it is called a line note. Find all those line notes and circle them. Or cross out the notes that are not line notes. Page 27. Our walking song coming back down to sea, parts 3 and 4. Practice these parts, then parts 1, 2, 3, and 4 in a row. When you can go up and down these notes easily, sing the words, I am walking up to G. Now I'm walking down to C. Page 28. Those note heads do not have a line going through the middle of their note heads, but are between two lines, sitting above a line, or hanging below a line, and they're called space notes. Page 29. Here is our walking song in notation, the words and what has been in our stand-up boxes. The note heads are showing the shape of the sound of this song, and those bottom beat boxes have orange lines in between each little set of four beats are measures. Keep playing and singing Hot Cross Buns and this walking song. Page 30. Here is a new kind of note. Just by putting a dot behind the note head of a half note, the note gets three beats. It is called a dotted half note. Page 31. A new song, one about butterflies. Look at part one. There are three beat boxes, and then there is that orange line. After the orange line, there are only three beat boxes as well. Music is always written in little parts. We have been playing songs that are written in four beat parts. This song is written in three beat parts. Three beat measures. Practice this song like you have practiced the others, one part at a time until it is learned so well you need no help, then on to the next part. The drawing of the keys at the top of the page always show you where to place your fingers. This song is using all five fingers on C, D, E, F, and G. We call that the C major five finger hand position. You are learning a lot of new words and phrases. Page 32, another tracing game. The black shape is called a quarter rest. It tells you not to play a key, so it is quiet for one beat. When we draw a quarter rest, we draw it like the red drawing, a stretched out Z with half a heart at the bottom. Trace those dotted gray quarter rests. Page 33, there's a tapping game at the top of the page. Tap and count each note head, say one for quarter notes, one and for two eighth notes, one, two for half notes, and one, two, three for dotted half notes. Cut out part three and learn it well just like your other songs, then play parts one, two, and three in a row. When you can do this well, cut out part four and learn it well. Then play the whole song in a row. Sing and play when you're able to do both. Page 34. This black shape is called the bass clef. When you see this in music notation, you will use your left hand most of the time and play from the middle of the keyboard down to the very low sounding bottom keys. Trace over those gray bass clefs. Remember to color all the dots. Page 35. This is showing fluttering butterflies in music notation with arrows showing the shape of the sound of the song, plus the words, plus the way you learned it with the stand-up box. Keep playing fluttering butterflies and your walking song and hot cross buns. Play and sing when you can do both together. Page 36. You are looking at the grand staff. There are five lines together with a treble clef sitting on them, and a little farther down are five lines with the bass clef sitting on them. 
That little right hand pointer hand is reminding you that most of the time you will use your right hand when playing notes on those treble clef lines, and the little left hand pointer is reminding you that most of the time you will use your left hand when playing notes on those bass clef lines. You also see two sets of fours, one above the other, on the treble lines and the bass lines. These are called time signatures. The top numbers tell us that each little part or measure in the song is going to have four beats. If the bottom number is a four, it tells us that quarter notes get one beat. Most music has that number four on the bottom. Then you see the tall line connecting the treble clef with its line spaces and time signature, which we call the treble staff, with the bass clef with its line spaces and time signature, which we call the bass staff. Next to the tall connecting line is a pretty bracket connecting the treble staff with the bass staff. With that bracket, we will never miss that connection. Page 37. Here we see two pointer hands that are stacked on top of each other with the palm of the right hand on the back of the left hand. We call that piggyback. Blue fingers on each hand are the fingers that are way to the left. If you look at the top little sets of pointer hands, you see the right hand sliding to the left on top of the gray colored left hand. So you can see why the left hand little finger is actually the left hand blue finger. And the right hand pink finger is over the top of the left hand thumb. So the left hand thumb is pink. Finger numbers match when we put the palms of our hands together like when we clap. So fingers that look alike have the same finger number. But our finger colors match when our hands are stacked piggyback. Page 38. This is a coloring page. Color those finger numbers the color of the dots so those big pointer hands match the little pointer hands. Page 39. Here we see a treble staff again, five lines with spaces in between, a treble clef sitting on top of those lines, and those two fours, one above the other. Remember, the top four tells us there are four beats per measure, and the bottom four tells us that quarter notes get one beat. Now look at those music lines in the middle of the page. That red line is telling us the measure begins there. Then there are four quarter notes in a row. Put one finger up for that first quarter note. Put another finger up for the next quarter note. Put another finger up for the next quarter note. And put another finger up for the next quarter note. You have four fingers up, so that is the end of a measure. Four beats, so that's why there is another red line. The next measure has half notes in it. Put up two fingers for that first half note. Now put up another two fingers for that next half note. Four fingers already, another four beat measure. Now look at the bottom set of music lines. Make a line at the beginning for a measure, then put up the correct number of fingers for each note. When you get to four fingers, make another measure line. Do that for all the notes in that set of lines. Page 40. We have been using stand-up boxes to learn our songs, but since we know how many beats, notes, and rests get, let's start using music notation rather than stand-up boxes for learning our songs. Music notation even lets us know exactly which key to play, too. We are going to be using both of our hands in this Right Left Together song. Look at those hand drawings at the top of the page. Right hand blue finger one will be playing on a C and our left hand blue finger five will also be playing on a C, the next C down from our right hand. Now let's take a look at that music measure and find out what it is showing us. There is a long blue line with blue finger numbers and arrows above and below it and some boxes. Look at the box outlined in red. There is a quarter note that is below the five lines of the treble clef. It just has a tiny line going through its note head. That is a very special note called middle C. It is the C that sounds like this. 
it should be about in the middle of your keyboard. That blue finger one is sitting on top of the long blue line just under that middle C with a blue arrow that is pointing up. So it is telling us to play that special middle C with our right hand blue finger one and also telling us that it is beat number one since that middle C is a quarter note. There is even more in that red box. Look down. On the bass clef lines, you will see a quarter rest. That is telling you that your left hand is playing nothing there. Okay, so for beat one, you will play a middle C with your right hand, blue one finger, and that's all. Now look at the next box, which is green. The blue number five is below that long blue line and the arrow is pointing down. That means our left hand will be playing that quarter note. Remember that drawing at the top of the page lets you know that note is a C, the next one down from that special middle C. And look, there is a rest on the treble clef lines, so your right hand plays nothing for beat number two. You have to remember to lift your finger off that middle C when it is left hand's turn to play. Now we know that our right hand blue finger one plays middle C for beat number one, and our left hand blue finger five plays the next C down for beat number two. Now look at that last box outlined in a wider light orange colored line. That long blue line has a blue finger one above the line and a blue finger five below the line. The blue arrow pointing up and the blue arrow pointing down are connected. Your right hand and your left hand Play those two C's at the same time, and they are half notes, so you hold down the keys for beats three and four. So, when using notation like this, you need to put your hands on the proper keys, like the drawing at the top of the page, then follow the colored finger numbers, just like in the stand-up boxes. We are using both hands now. Right hand finger numbers are above the long colored line with arrows pointing up, and left hand finger numbers are below that long colored line with arrows pointing down. We know how long to hold each key just by looking at what kind of note is above or below the finger numbers. So practice right hand blue finger one on middle C for beat one, left hand blue finger five on the lower C for beat two, and both hands on their C's for beats three and four. Practice this until it is easy and you get used to using the finger numbers above and below a line in the middle of the music notation. Saying the words will make it easier for you to remember right, left, together. Page 41. Here we see our treble staff with that treble clef sitting on those five lines and spaces. There is a red line drawn on part of line two. That line two is the line where the treble clef swirls around. The treble clef is telling us that line two is special. It is showing us where a special G is in music notation. So the treble clef is also called the G clef, and the treble staff is also called the G staff. Find those famous G's in that blue box. Page 42. This is the next measure of our right, left, together song. Our hand position has our right hand red two finger on D and our left hand red four finger on a D. The music notation is telling us that the D our right hand is playing is next to that middle C. Look at the long line. Right hand red two plays on D for beat one. Left hand red four plays on the next D down for beat two. And both hands play on their Ds with their pretend red fingers for beats three and four, since that last note is a half note. Page 43. This is a game page. In each line, find the shapes that are exactly the same as the shape in the first bigger box. You don't have to do the whole page at one time. Just do a line or two at a time. Page 44. You should be used to using this music notation for learning your song by now. 
This measure is using both right and left hand green three fingers. Our tall middle fingers of each hand are the only fingers where the colors and the finger numbers match. Learn this measure well, then play measures one, two, and three in a row. Page 45. This is a math game. You might need lots of help. You have to change those notes in each box to get the proper number of beats. The top row of boxes are four beat boxes, so the notes need to add up to four. The middle row are three beat boxes, so the notes need to add up to three. And the bottom row is four beat boxes again. Page 46. Now you are playing with right hand brown finger four and left hand brown finger two on Fs. Practice until those fingers work. Then practice playing measures one, two, three, and four in a row. Page 47. Here is our bass clef showing us a special note, the line note that is right between those two dots of the bass clef. That note is our famous F. So the bass clef is sometimes called the F clef, and the bass staff is sometimes called the F staff. Find those Fs in the red box and circle them. Page 48. We are now up to G with both our hands. This G that is above our middle C is our famous G, by the way. Carefully learn this part, then play all the parts in a row. Page 49. Those empty note heads are showing us line notes, and the solid color note heads are showing us space notes. And then there is that quarter note with its little stem attached. In the blue box, circle the space notes. In the red box, circle the line notes. Page 50. Here is our Left Right Together song in music notation. You can practice that song singing as you play with those words that match the rhythm. C, C, two C's, D, D, two D's, E, E, two E's, F, F, two F's, G, G, two G's. Page 51. Here is a new song. It uses both hands one at a time. The C major hand position is shown at the top of the page, and that C needs to be middle C. Now look at the notation. First measure is just right hand alone. Practice this measure slowly at first, then speed up because those first four notes are eighth notes. Count those beats. Remember to use your heel, down, up, down, up, so that you get those eighth notes in the proper rhythm. There are some rests circled. Let's look at page 52. Page 52. The green box at the top of the page has a quarter note and a quarter rest in it. They each get one beat. The red box has a two beat half note, plus there's a rest that looks like a little hat that also gets two beats. Shh, for two beats. The blue box has an empty note head. An empty note head in music with no stem is a whole note and gets four beats. The whole rest looks like a box with a cover. The box is full. It also gets four beats. Then the brown box just has a funny little shape that is an eighth rest. So it gets just half of a beat, like eighth notes get. There are two four beat measures drawn on the lower part of the page. The first measure has a whole rest in it. So that rest gets all four beats. The next measure has a half rest that gets two beats, two eighth rests that each get half of a beat, so together get one beat, and a quarter rest that gets one beat. Four beats total. Measure filled. Now back to page 51. Page 51. Two rests are circled in light orange. Beat four in the treble staff is a quarter rest so be sure not to make a sound for beat four. The bass staff has one of those whole rests hanging below the line, so no sound for the whole measure. You might want to tap this rhythm so that you get used to the sound. Use that heel down up trick 
and count one and two and three and four and. Remember to hold down that middle C for the whole beat three, the three plus the and. And that whole fourth beat four and is quiet because of the rest. Here's how the rhythm sounds when it's tapped. One and two and three and four and. You can practice rhythms like this just by tapping one of your fingers in your lap while moving your heel down and up. You can do this during TV commercials or even while riding in the car. Page 53. Now that rain song has just the left hand playing. That left hand thumb is playing on the G to the left of middle C. Again, we have eighth notes. So it may take a while before those left hand fingers can move not only evenly, but quickly. Start slowly. Let those fingers learn to move this way before gradually speeding up. And there are those rests again. Whole rest in the treble staff and a quarter rest in the bass staff for beat four. Page 54. This measure is just like measure one of our rain song. Practice playing measures one, two, three in a row. Be sure to lift your finger off the key for those beat fours. Page 55. This is different. Start with left hand. That green finger three plays an eighth note. That eighth note has a dot above its note head. That dot tells us just to tap that piano key. It will sound just like a drop of rain. Notes with a dot above or below the note head are called staccato notes. That's a new word, staccato. That eighth note is followed by an eighth rest. Then left hand plays another staccato eighth note on D followed by an eighth rest. Then beat three is quiet for both hands and right hand finger five plays a staccato eighth note at the beginning of beat four followed by an eighth rest for the end of beat four. Look at those rests. The right hand doesn't play anything until the beginning of beat four. The left hand plays nothing after playing the first part of beat two. Be sure to count one and two and three and four and so you get those notes playing in the proper rhythm. You just have staccato notes at the beginning of beats one, two, and four and nothing the rest of the time. That rain is just dripping during this measure. Here's how the rhythm of this measure sounds. One and two and three and four and. Practice measures one, two, three, and four in a row. Page 56, the last measure in our rain song. Only our right hand will be playing. Beat one is a quarter rest. The beginning of beat two is a staccato eighth note played by right hand finger one on middle C. That measure needs four beats in it, so lots of rests in this measure. The two tall lines at the end of the measure, one like a measure line and the second much thicker, circled in bright pink at the end of the staff lines, tell us the song has ended. Practice measures four and five together to get the proper rhythm. The rhythm of the two measures sounds like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. It is a bit tricky, but it really does sound like rain dripping to a stop. Here is that same rhythm played more quickly and on the correct piano keys. Page 57. Here is our rain song in music notation. You can really see the shape of the sound just by looking at it. The beat numbers are written in those measures to remind you of the rhythm. The notes play on the black beat numbers and the and signs, and the gray numbers are the silent parts of the beats. You might even want to practice tapping as you say the words to really get a feel for the rhythm. Rain is running fast down my window pane. How long will it last? Drip, drop, it stopped. 
Remember, tapping your heel down, up, down, up helps when you are counting your beats or saying the words. Practice playing and singing this song. It's a really fun song when played correctly, and even more fun when played and sung at the same time. Page 58. Now is the time for you to play your songs with both of your hands at the same time. When you play the melody of a song with both hands at the same time, it is called playing in parallel. Practice only one measure at a time until that measure is easy. Only then move to the next measure. Do this for the whole song. Be patient with that left hand. It is using different fingers from the right hand. Just playing on keys with the same names and using those same pretend colored fingers. Look at the top of the page for your hand position. And your right hand needs to start on middle C and your left hand plays the C to the left of middle C. When playing with notes, you have to play on certain keys. If you are playing by memory and want to play games by playing the songs in different places, that's fine and fun. When you have the music in front of you, though, you have to follow the music exactly. Practice this until you can play it easily with no help. Then sing and play at the same time when you are able to do so. Page 59. Oh, hot cross buns with two hands. Follow the one measure at a time procedure. Take your time. The trickiest measure is going to be measure three. And remember, that C in the music is played with your right hand blue finger one on middle C. Page 60. Here's the first part of our fluttering butterflies for playing both hands in parallel. The key signature has a three above the four, so these measures only have three beats apiece. Practice this one measure at a time. And look, measures one, two, and three are all the same. Page 61. These are the last four measures of fluttering butterflies. The first three measures on this page are the same. They are actually measures five, six, and seven. And the last measure only has two dotted half note C's. Play fluttering butterflies until you can play and sing the whole song without any help. Your left hand is probably getting quite good by now. Page 62. Here is one of those measure games again. This time that top number in the time signature is a three, so there are only three beats per measure. And since the bottom number is a four, quarter notes get one beat. Do this page like you did the page with the four beat measures. Page 63. We have learned to play one note with each of our hands at the same time now. That pink outline box is showing us two notes that are lined up so are played together. The green outline box shows two notes in the treble staff and two notes in the bass staff. They are also all lined up, so you would have to play two notes at the same time with each hand, so all four notes would be played at the same time. Page 64. This is the first measure of a new song called Indian Drums. This does have two notes that need to be played with the left hand at the same time. These two notes are the drum sound, and the left hand will be playing these two notes during the entire song. That little drum drawing has pink and blue cartoon notes on it. Notice in the top drawing that the left hand is moving to the right one key. Left hand blue finger five will be playing on a D, and left hand pink finger one will be playing on a key named A. The right hand is in a middle C major hand position. Practice playing the D and A with your left hand until you can push down both of those keys at the same time. Then play them one time with your right hand, brown finger four, playing on that F. All three keys at the same time. When you can do that, continue on page 65. Page 65. Learn this song one measure at a time. The colored finger numbers for the right hand are above that long orange line. However, below the line are just little cartoon drums. 
since the left hand will be playing that drum sound on D and A all the way through the song on every single beat. The measures with the blue outlined boxes around them are all the same. The measures with the bright pink around them are also the same. The green box and orange box measures are each different. You will have fun learning this song, but go slowly. Give those hands time to get that muscle memory working. Page 66. And here is our Indian drum song in music notation. The words are here too, so when you can play that Indian drum song really well with no help, start singing the words as you play. You did a wonderful job. Keep playing these songs. Don't forget them. When you play songs that are easy for you to play, it makes learning new songs much easier.